Welcome to Judy's Mind Body, and we're going to look at history first, okay? So I've been reading the last two times, so I hope you don't run away. Um, this is from a book called The Art of Qigong, Getting the Most of Your Vital Energies. And it's written by Wong Q. Kit, a grandmaster of the Shaolin uh, Temple. And uh, he's been practicing Qigong and been a master at least 30 years. So this was written several years ago. That's the book. I was interested because we talked a little bit about history the other day, the 10,000 years of Qigong. Qigong is actually older than history. It was practiced in antiquity, not only by the Chinese, but also by people of other great cultures at different places and times, known by different names, the Indians, for example, called it yoga. The ancient Greeks and Egyptians called it the art of mysteries and the Tibetans, the art of wisdom. The master of these arcane consecrated arts might not have heard of the term Qigong, though all of them were quite similar in their aims, approaches, methodologies, and philosophies. Like the Chinese, these ancient masters perceived their arts exclusively, teaching only a very few specially selected disciples. And this explains why these arts developed independently. Chinese archeological records show that Neolithic cavemen in China practiced Qigong, probably through trial and error, discovering a number of Qigong techniques. For example, they discovered that if a person makes an explosive sound at the point of physical exertion, like saying, hurt, when lifting a heavy object, he would be able to marshal more energy for the task. Or if he gently exhaled onto an injured part of the body, like blowing Shh, onto a wound, he would be able to relieve the pain. And then... The next thing is by the time of the Shang Dynasty, 16th to 11th centuries, Qigong had developed to a fairly high level. Bronze vessels of this period show human figures in clay Qigong, in Qigong movements, which were perhaps the prototype of today's Qigong patterns. Many of them imitating animals, the tortoise, the crane, and the monkey, like someone's cat I just saw that's 18 years old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Qigong, the art of Qigong, making the most of our vital energy. And now we're going to begin with some stretching. This is first a very old move. Triple burner. It's coming through three energy centers, the head, the heart, and the lungs and it comes all the way down to the abdomen. Here's the third at the head, here's the second at the heart and lungs, and here's the third at the abdomen. Only we call it the first and primary for Tai Chi. Buddha picks up the earth and sends it into the sky. And here we inhale. And here we exhale. And we watch the world go away. Many of these movements create circles. Cause you to breathe in here, to exhale here. A long exhale, which we call relaxation response. And in that way, improve our breathing and also our alignment, the long spine that we need as we grow older. So thinking about that, imagine that you've got a string from the back of your crown of your head that extends down through your cervical, thoracic, 
and lumbar spine all the way to your tailbone, one long line. And then send the earth up. You'll be much more powerful. That power comes from within, it comes from here. Inhale and push up using your abdomen, your low Dan Tian or energy center. And one more of Buddha picks up the earth and sends it into the sky. And now we're going to look at our next movement here, which will be called heart and lungs opening. The accordion, now we're getting a linear expansion. Now we're gonna exhale and contract and open at the abdomen and the rib cage and at the center of the body there on the rib cage, especially, and then close it down a little bit. You don't have to bring the palms together. You just wanna to begin to feel that there's something there that we're creating, chi, as these palms move together. Look at them. That often brings even more redness to them. I'm not sure why that is. It feels like embarrassment, but I don't think the eye, that the hands do that. But anyway, I wonder about things like that. Here's the inhale and here's the exhale. And you're on rider in horse position. Your feet are in a fairly large V here. And like an accordion, we could slowly exhale back and actually hear our own exhale. Let's do that. Make a shh, shh. Right about there you need to inhale, right? Inhale back. We should begin to create chi here. Chi is your vital intrinsic energy. And we're gonna sink it down. For three groundings, the first to the heart, inhale and drop it to the abdomen. The second to your head and slowly down. And let's think big here. Let's go up to the sky today, which the sun just came out. Hey, thanks. And sink it down slowly. And then we're gonna look at our weight shift here. Let's just come side to side. Feet are in a V. You can feel the energy move towards this yawn leg, that masculine leg. And the yin leg is straighter and it's very light. So feel the lightness of that and then feel the lightness of this. And as we move, this is your right side. And this is your left side. So feel the, ch the change of the balance here, that's the yawn leg when you move to the right. And this is the yin. You could do something with it. Yin, it's light, it's resilient. Now come back here. This is the yawn leg. And now the other leg is resilient. Yin. Yeah, a stool helps here. <laughs> Just an advice thing. Because you want to be able to see how the freedom of leg here is when you drop it. It's yin. Only the heel comes down. And you could come forward here and balance on that leg. And the other leg could be the in leg and you could play with it because it's free. Now, if you can do that, you've got pretty good balance. You guys are doing this without a chair, one of you at least. <laughs> and the rest of us <laughs> might need this, something to hold on to. <laughs> okay, good, that looks great. All right, now let's go behind a stool. This is a great prop. We're gonna shift across this way and shift back. I just want you to feel the yawn leg here, the yin leg over here. It's it's uh, long, it's straight, but it's not locked. And that allows you to then not have to re-bend it over here because you're always slightly bent. Nice. Now, how do we use that? We can use that to figure out how to do our front back shift. So I've got this over here on this side, your right side. 
And I'm going to shift towards that leg and release the left, which is going to be my yin leg. So I slightly bent this leg already coming from rider on horse position. Now I drop the left heel and I'm going to practice my weight shift here, holding on. Why? Because sometimes my balance is not all the greatest, but I want to start with good balance. So I'm going to shift into this front leg, bending that knee a little more than the back. The back's pretty straight and the heel's up. Now when I come all the way back here, the toe is up on this left leg for you. And you wanna feel that change of balance forward and back, and if possible, without dipping. So let's pretend there's a clothesline here, and we're gonna hold on to the clothesline and slide back. That way we stay straight up and down. Beautiful. All right, let's go to the other side. Now your left leg is over here by the chair and you're gonna drop down into your rider on horse, which is a V position and shift into that leg, which is your left and release your right, play with it first. Good, some of you don't even have to hold on to anything, not me. But... Okay, now you're gonna drop this heel and it's going to become the yin leg that starts the practice. And you come forward here, bending that front knee, and then you can actually push off here and release the other leg. And now we're doing the Buddhist walking meditation. That's a good idea. <laughs> Hold on something, something on the side that doesn't exist. <laughs> All right, one more. Now we're gonna go back. Now it's your right toe first, and then your left toe and you're coming all the way back to your heels, but you're coming through the middle of the foot too, which causes a little bit of dip, but not much. We'll go to the other side. This is also called the Tai Chi walk. It prepares us to start with our heel, then move through the bubbling spring, and then the, the front ball of the foot. So here's the front ball of the foot, here's the middle of the foot here, and here's the heel. Three points, one, two, three. We want all points to be nice. <laughs> that looks really good. Okay, sink it down. Shift over towards your left, to, to your right, sorry. Release your left heel and come forward with your Tai Chi walk and push off when you need to. And those of you who need it, who will be watching this video, you can set up chairs all the way along there for accessibility and just go to the next chair. If you have enough space, it works. Good, and now we're back to where we started. Okay, and then the other really good shift we can practice at the beginning, just to get the legs warmed up, the backs of the calves and the thighs and the whole body. If you hold on to your chair now, and you're going to come to the front of the feet, coming up onto the balls of the feet. You can feel your toes here. Now come back to center, which would be the midpoint of your foot there. It'll be a little bit of a sink. And then come up to the heels. This is where you'll need something to hold on to. A wall also works. Or a counter. Come back to center through the bubbling spring. That's that dip there that you feel. And then up to the front of the foot on the balls of the feet. You can feel the toes here, maybe for a second, <laughs> you can do that. Not being an acrobat, I can't stay up very long. And now you're gonna come back and back to the heels. And you really feel like you've done something to the backs of the legs, right? It's warming yourself up. And we need those extensions to be able to create strength in the feet and in the legs. And this will play out when we get to rocking motion, not that, not that exaggerated, but it's something we can really use. Okay, and then the third thing I wanted to show on this stool besides the side to side and front back weight shift is uh, the belly, rib cage, upper chest breath. So one hand on your heart area and the other hand on your belly. We want expansion here. It's really important because we want to be able to use our 
uh, muscles here internally and inhale, expand and exhale, contract. So the best thing I know of is from yoga. It's a three part breath, starting with your abdomen, breathing in through the nostrils, rib cage, upper chest, breathing out through your nostrils. It causes the abdomen to push in and then inhale. In fact, you can push it in if you want to when you come down for the exhale. Exhale. Push in. Inhale. Expand. And one more. Exhale. Contract. Inhale. Expand. Beautiful. And notice when you do this, you can't really see right here, but when you do this, you're going to feel an expansion in front at the belly. And you're, you're going to feel a contraction back here, right, right above your tailbone. That's the Ming Men area. So inhale, expand here. Exhale, go back. And you'll feel a pushing in of this area and the energy will come towards your low spine. Inhale. Exhale. So it's similar to yoga. And if they were really con connected across the trade routes, as our author says, then why not? Why wouldn't there be some real similarity here? So let's do our accordion breath now. Inhale, expand the rib cage. And you'll find that you're also expanding at the abdomen. And exhale back. Without going the whole way, to bring the palms together, inhale again. Good. So I, I love the idea that we can do most of these things on the edge of a stool. You don't really want to have your back back like that because then you're going to be shrinking your size. So if you do use a stool through the whole practice, which some people do, make sure you really do it straight with a straight back. A move that I just found in a book that stars Qigong, it's called Qigong, and it stars the work of Effie Chong, Effie Chow, sorry, is heaven and earth. So bring this arm up here, straighten it out, send the palm up, flatten it at the top like this, and then bring the other palm down on the other side and straighten the, the arm and feel the flatness of this palm. Heaven and earth. And then maybe even look up towards heaven and look down towards earth. So we really feel that this has some meaning, that we connect what's above us and that we connect the grounding down here. And then inhale center. Beautiful, that looked really good. And come back up. And now I like to have this palm face this way this time, and maybe both of them face that way. And then look that way. So I'm connecting to all the, all the points of the earth, you know, this way, and now center, and now bring it down and go the opposite way with your palm and the opposite way with your head. That way you've got almost a sense of bringing in the head to this, but keeping the rest of the body still, because most of us need neck movement. And come back to center. Let's bring the palms all the way up. Come down in a circular movement. And we'll go back up for triple burner, because we just did one of those at the beginning. Sink through the head, heart and lungs, and abdomen. Exhale. Inhale, big time. Exhale, slow time. The slower we can move, the more we get a beautiful exhale, which is the relaxation response.
And I can attest that sometimes I wake up really early in the morning and do this. The best time that they say for meditation is about two in the morning. So I sometimes do that, not because they say that, but because I feel that. There's nothing happening. And you can really feel the chi go through your whole body. Now start bringing not just the nostril opening, but the tongue to the upper palate and we'll have the qigong breath. Now you can inhale through the nostrils, but see if you can connect to the Qigong breath. Placing the tongue there. Now exhale, both, both you'll be through the throat and through the nostrils. Yes, good. And I did 12 of those this morning at 2 a.m. and it was wonderful. And there's another breath, if you like this breath, you might wanna be careful, but you can bring your hands to your belly. And this is the a breath from yoga where you pump the breath. And exhale. So that does energize you a lot. So we're somehow not advised to do that on Zoom, but I do it after I'm, if I'm really nervous or something or something is bothering me, I want to get rid of, I do this about 20 times, and then it's gone. And then another really great breath is when you bring your thumb out like this, your second and third fingers in your fourth and fifth on your right hand. I'm using my right hand. You're going to bring your thumb to the right nostril and exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close it off with the ring finger. It's your fourth finger. Exhale through the thumb side. Open it up. Breathe in through the thumb side, close it off, exhale through the other side. Breathe in through the left nostril, exhale through the right. And if you do that about 20 times, no thought is left in your brain. <laughs> exhale the other side. <laughs> it gets rid of everything. Anyway, it's very effective if you've had a fight with someone or something, you really want to calm yourself down. Alternate, but you can look it up, alternate nostril breathing, analoma, veloma breath. Very good for nervous wrecks. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do uh, the propeller, another great Effie Chow thing. You bring your arms out in a T. You inhale and you start to turn towards your left, exhaling. Almost 180 degrees if you bring your hips with you. Hips, center body, chest, shoulders, head, and eyes. Inhale back to center. And now exhale the other way. And you can take your time with this so you can breathe when you get to this side, when you can see behind you. Part way, and then inhale center, and we'll go one more time. Let's go a little faster now because it is a propeller. Absolutely, early airplanes invented this. Maybe not. Maybe someone else invented this ten thousand years ago. I don't know, but it's the propeller, and you can take it a little faster. And you can take it a little slower, whatever you want to do. And you can take it a little bit higher. I like to play with things. So this is what I tried the other day. It's not a big deal, but what does it feel like to go higher? Now, what does it feel like to go lower? Oh. 
the kid in us always says, let's change it. Go the opposite way. And now you really have a full breath inhaling over here and exhaling back. And now let's let it go because that for some people is going to be hard to hold the arms up that long. Shake it out. The best Qigong move at all. Start from the feet and move up through your knees and then bring it to your buttocks and then bring it up here. And that's it. <laughs> you want to just have fun with it. Good. And you can add noise. O noise is really good because I'm not going to say nert, but I want to say ooh, ooh, wee, wah, whoa, way, Just a number of Italian vowels you can add for all of those of you who are Italian out there. You've got lots of vowels. Okay, good. Shake it out. Groundings. Inhale to the heart. Exhale down. Inhale to the head. That's your third Dan Tien energy center. Exhale down to the second and all the way down to the first primary. And then go up there to be glad that we've got sunlight coming in today after days of rain. And exhale down slowly. Beautiful. Picking up a feather and letting it go, flatten the palm like you're gonna paint the wall. It's not really graffiti here, it's more like painting through air, but the idea is that we have this freedom to feel that we can imagine ourselves painting down the wall, seeing everything that's there with our peripheral vision and having fun doing it without creating any damage. Certainly we create more flexibility in our bodies, more ability to lengthen all of our joints and the freedom that kids have. And shift over to this side. We'll bring this heel forward and we're gonna now add a shift over here as we bring this up and use the back toes to really center that foot there so you're not gonna fall over but you're lengthening this leg and you're lengthening this arm and you're lengthening this whole rib cage here, picking up a feather and now paint coming down and look at it. So bend this back leg a little bit and play yin get yawn games with it. Bending and straightening. And you can add so many things to these beautiful, simple moves. Very nice. Let's do it on the other side now, okay? Using your shift. Coming back to center. Beautiful. And now we're going to come to the owl and transition into some aerobic but controlled movements. And the owl, we bring the palms behind us and send them down so that the shoulders are not up. We're going to just stay here, feet in a V, rider on horse position, and bring the head over to this side on the inhale so that the chin almost goes to the shoulder there. For some of you, maybe it goes farther than mine. And you're gonna come back center. And then you're gonna to come to the other side. Exhale as you twist the head, but stay with your body focused from the top down. The owl. And now let's go all the way across. 
because you probably have longer breath at this time. Inhale here and go all the way across on your exhale. Two more. Good. Circling the head, bringing the chin to the chest, still with, with your arms down, bring the chin down to the chest and your, your ear here to the shoulder and then around to the other side. And if this is too much for you to do the ear to shoulder aspect, you can make it a smaller circle. As if you had a dog collar on, that works really well. One more here. And now we'll start on the opposite side, but first bring your chin to the chest and then move this ear probably on your left to opposite to the shoulder and then go around. Whatever you didn't do the last time, you always want to do both circular movements, clockwise and counterclockwise. Let's do one more. That's really good for the whole neck area that tends to get tense. Now you're going to bring your fingers up here to inside the shoulder points here and then circle them around forward, up, back and down. And that's really good for the shoulder blades as they roll down the back here and you open the chest. Good. Now we're going to go the opposite way. Instead of going this way, we're going to go this way and forward. But now we're going to swim a bit. This is really good. You can bring your feet into it. Good. So you want to, when you're moving, you want to bring hip, knee, and ankle together, right? So I feel my heel just go out this way and then go out this way. And all the time you're balancing on the other foot. And there's a little bit of shifting in here if you find it. But the back leg's getting extended. So be sure you don't fall over. <laughs> okay, good. Let's shake it out again, because we're going to do our backstroke. <laughs> and we'll just do that standing still, because we're on a little raft that's very buoyant, and we don't have a care in the world right now, probably looking up at the sun. Beautiful. Now let's just splash around a little bit here with the wrists and the hands. Splash, 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 splash. And you can even introduce a circle here with your third finger leading the way and then the opposite way. Because we'll be doing some circles in Tai Chi Chi that are generally forward like this. But they're, they take a little bit of wrist movement and freedom in the hands. Let's free the hands up a little bit more. This is the air guitar. Just play the guitar all the way up there. And shift into it. Balancing on your yawn leg when you get up here. Good, and then come back to center. And we'll go the opposite way. Everybody okay so far? Uh, you should feel like a rag doll about this point. And you're going to go up this way. Beautiful. And sink it through the earth.
and double ground it. Hip circles forward to your right, back to your left. And you can use your abs here. I was letting mine go, but probably when you come back here, you want to feel some movement in there. Like a little exhale here, maybe. Good. Let's go the opposite way. You can make a sound like, like choo-choo train. That'll bring the abs in. The more we can remember that we've got our breath connected there, the better. Good. Let it go. Wrist circles, just bringing the elbows close to the body, but beginning to feel all the joints kind of connect from here down to the wrist and fingers. Fingers are pretty relaxed now. And now we're starting to go slowly, but we're not through yet with uh, knocking at the gates and tapping down in the fountain. So that'll be next. I think you can go from fast to slow. I'm, I'm not a problem. I don't have a problem with that. But if you do, you can sit these ones out. Okay, knocking at the gates, aerobic. And we all love this because we get to tap our own butts without having somebody else hit us there. This is really good for the skin, the fascia, the muscles, and it brings chi to that whole part of your body. Now we're gonna come up to the kidney area, which is just behind the back here, right above the waist. You have to really keep your chest high on this. And now we'll come to the lung points right here. We're just gonna keep the movement going with our feet. You wanna swish your feet like you're in water or sand. Swish, 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 good. Now we're gonna tap down, fold forward from your hips to do this when you go over, because that'll give you a flat back here. And then round the back and you can come down the inside of the legs, down to your toes and up the outside of the legs. You bend your knees. Get flexibility there, and let's try it again. Pull forward from the hips, inside of the legs, the little toes all the way around, outside of the legs. Back up. And now we brush down. This is Qigong massage stuff, self-massage. Inside of the arm, outside of the arm, any way you wanna do this. It's just getting rid of any tension or other stuff. And you can brush down the body. Once again, fold forward from the hips. Brush down, brush down the outside, come back up any way you want there and shake it out. And then we go into last portion of this to go towards the, do some yoga moves, but this is the fountain. And we're going to start here. Inhale up. Make a big circle here. Now bring the backs of the palms together and then slowly fold forward from the hips over and release. You're just going to hang there outside your toes. You don't have to touch anything here. And then bring the backs of the palms together. Come back up. Inhale open for the fountain and go back down a couple more times. This is really important stuff here. If you can't go all the way over, then don't, <laughs> okay? Take care of yourself. Come back up. You can always go halfway. You can go right to here and stop or you can go all the way over and come back up. Bend the knees as you move down, that helps. Good, come back up slowly. Let's ground it.
And we'll come into a yoga move, which is the prayer. Bring that one all the way down through the center of your body, all the way down to your abdomen. Inhale up again. Feel the exhale all the way down to your tailbone. And a third one of the prayer. And then a very slow spinal twist uh, for your whole body that's a yoga thing also. You're gonna come to the balls of the feet, come up this way, come into prayer, and then do a prayer twist. You might be doing a little jiggling here, but that's okay. And then you're gonna twist over here to your right. Inhale back to center slowly. I'm jiggling on purpose because I don't wanna tighten my legs there. Inhale and now twist to the other side. Come back to center in the inhale and let it go. This is a side bend. Bring this hand over, bring this other hand, your left hand down the thigh on the outside, bring the belly in and twist as if you were between two panes of glass. It's a side twist here, side bend. Not a twist really, a side bend. Inhale back up. Now as this hand starts coming down the thigh on the other side, bring the other hand up. And you're between two panes of glass, meaning that the upper body and the lower body should be between the glass there. So we're not folding forward from the top. Come back and one more time. Inhale and exhale down, side bend. And come back up, bring both arms up now. And exhale out. And inhale back up. Push it up. Where Buddha picks up the earth, sends it into the sky. And then one more up. And one more down. Qigong and yoga were apparently connected across the trade routes. So a lot of sharing. So it's Qigong doesn't seem like that much different from Hatha yoga to me. And now we are at one more thing that I need to do with you. Knee circles. Fold forward from the hips, the feet are together. Take hold of your knees and circle to the right, forward, left, back. Several times here, but really slow. It's slowness is where we're going now. When you come to the front now, start the opposite way. Left, back, right, forward. And not fast. Moving into slowness for Tai Chi Chi, 19 movements in one pose. We'll stand up slowly, inhale. Come into Tadas, another mountain pose, also shared in Qigong and in yoga. Feel like a mountain, relax all the joints. You might wanna notice, is anything still tense? But lengthen as much as you can as if you had a string pulling you up there from the back of the skull. And breathe. Explore your Qigong breath, inhaling through the nostrils, placing your tongue on the upper palate here, so that when you exhale down, you'll feel it through your nostrils and your throat area. And feeling the breath also in the abdomen as you expand and contract. and then just soften everything, let it go. Rocking motion, Tai Chi Chi. 
the oldest Qigong move that we perceive shared by many, many Qigong practices. This is a figure eight here. The symbol of long health and vitality in Western medicine and in Eastern medicine where it began. Feet are in a V. This can be done nine times today. Sometimes you can do 27 or 36 or more. <laughs> a great 2 a.m. or 2.30 a.m. practice. Last one of rocking motion. Sink it into the earth and double ground it. Bird flaps its wings is next. Feet are in a V, sinking and rising. Exhale, come to the balls of the feet in front of the foot. Heels come up. Inhale, lengthen. To breathe in. Second one. And on the third one, the bird on the branch lifts the heels and circles once for learning to fly. Two more cycles. Third cycle of bird flaps its wings. Beautiful, sink it through the earth and double ground it. Take it to your head. Take it up to the sky. And look, see it go. Around the platter is next, shifting to your right to bring your left heel forward, right from the hip hip, knee, ankle together. Inhale out, exhale back. I feel the exhale right about where I'm opposite the heart and lungs, right there. And the palms are relaxed and rounded and you're in chest high water. Feel the inhale at the belly, the expansion and the contraction here. Last one. Bring the foot in. Inhale to ground it through the earth. To shift to your left side and release the right heel around the platter.
Start your circle outside whatever knee is forward. And then feel the knee release as you move back with that leg. Two more. Beautiful. Bring the foot back in. Inhale to sink it into the earth. And to double ground it because we finished the right side. Now we return to the platter, but this is a variation shift to your right. Release your left. Pick up a ball of energy at your right shoulder. Inhale it out and sink it in the middle. Beautiful. That's three. We have six more to go. Two more. Good, bring the foot back in. Your left foot just returned. And now you're gonna shift to your left and bring the right heel forward. Around the platter now, we'll start with a variation over here on this left shoulder for you or right shoulder for you, sorry, and come back towards the left. Slowness, continuity, circularity, moving from the center, and feeling it within all principles of Qigong. One more. Bring the right foot in. Inhale, sink it through the earth. Double ground it. You want to really feel like you're grounding solidly because we're moving into parasympathetic nervous system now. So that's why we do the double grounding on the right side because your brain starts to go, ooh, a little bit. Good. Now we're going to bass drum. Good. Feel the rim of the drum. drum like it's velvet, inhale around it. And then when it comes back to you, exhale. Feel the expansion on the inhale, the contraction on the exhale. Last one on your left. Bring the foot back in. Sink it through the earth. Shift towards your left for your bass drum on the right. Coming around the dr drum, feel the palms go up. They're relaxed. The fingers are relaxed and open. There's a connection between the elbows moving 
back and the hips. And you're making a circle with the drum that's around you. You're the middle of it. Breathing in, breathing out. Connecting mind, body, spirit with that breath and that movement. Two more. Good, bring the foot, the right foot back in. Inhale to sink it through the earth. One more grounding. <clears throat> Shifting to your right to bring the left forward for daughter on the mountaintop, daughter in the valley will follow this after we do both sides here, left first. Notice the shape of the mountains you're climbing up both sides here. Shape into a heart when the left hand moves behind the right at the wrist. And at the heart. Feel the contraction at your belly and the expansion as you move forward. Last one on your left side. Single grounding between left and right. Shift towards your left to release your right. Daughter on the mountaintop. Feel these two mountains that you're going to then come down through the central trail from. All the way down to the abdomen on your exhale. Feel your expansion there at the belly and your contraction here. Three more. Beautiful. Bring that foot in. Inhale to sink it through the earth. And to double ground it. You're always returning to rider on horse position. I find works best. And now we move into daughter in the valley. You're going to shift right to bring the left forward. And you're going to feel that this foot is right out from the hip there, not too far over there. So nice, nice width, but not too much. Starting from the tops of the mountains, inhale through the central trail. That's the closest polarity we have. Polarity is when the palms face each other and there's energy between them created by relaxed palms and fingers that are rounded. The palms are. And then you let it go over the mountains, the energy. There it goes. Exhale back. Perhaps metaphorically, this is the tops of the mountains and you're looking down at the valley now or surveying how beautiful it is, that expanse of, the, of your vision over the whole vista. That happens on this exhale back here. Wow. <laughs> you climb mountains, you know exactly what I'm talking about.
Inhale and let it go. <clears throat> Inhale and release. And now that we've finished that, let's do the other side. Don't forget to breathe. This is an inhale forward. This is an exhale back. Expansion, contraction. And one more of Daughter in the Valley. Beautiful. Inhale and sink it through the earth and double ground it for sure. Sometimes we're just drawn to do more grounding. I can't help it. it just goes up to the sun today and then comes back down. and moving meditation. So let your mind sometimes take you other places. It's good. Now we're going to come over here and carry the ball to the side. Wind up, pick up the ball, shift this yin leg out there, just the heel, and then shift across three times. And now as you stand, inhale, and then exhale. Wind up, knees are a little bent here. They kind of stay that way until you finally inhale after three of them. And keep the buttocks under as you bend those knees. Otherwise you'll have some back problem here. So keep the back long and the chest open. sometimes described as sliding across a grand piano stool. And then wind up and we go across again. And returning to where we started, we'll come back to center for push pull. Rider and horse position. Fingertips right here. And then shifting to your right, bring the left forward and move down with the heel of the hand and then up in a circle that returns to you as you circle the wrists back towards yourself. Yourself on the inhale. Push. Give yourself chi as you inhale back. It just bathes your face. It's so beautiful. Giving and receiving energy.
Exhale. Inhale back to your heart. Two more. Great, beautiful. Bring the foot back in, your left foot returns. Sinking into the earth. Shift over to the left, release your right, and start again. Push, pull, giving, and receiving energy in a circle that never ends. Those of you who are musicians and singers can feel the inner rhythm of this. It's always just so beautiful when you go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Even without counting, you can feel there's a steadiness in it. We want that. It's like the circle that doesn't end. Beautiful, let's do one more on this side, on your right side now. Bring it back to the heart on the inhale. The foot comes back to rider on horse and we double ground it. Once to the heart and down to the abdomen here, resting on globes of energy for a second here. And then come back to the heart again. Bring it up to the head. It needs to go up. Sink it down. You'll feel that. You really want that sense of a slow rain or slow fog coming here as you bring the palms down. And the next one is pulling in the energy from the farthest star in the universe. You shift to your right, bring your left forward, and then the fingertips are up, and you're making a beautiful circle bringing in fresh chi from the farthest star you can imagine. You can bring it all the way across here like you're going across the whole Milky Way if you want. Ask for the chi the whole way. Inhale it. Bring it back to the heart. Two more. Beautiful. Bring that foot in with your left. Sink it into the earth. Shift towards your left. Bring your right heel forward and pull in the energy from the farthest star in the universe with the fingertips. Feel the expansion of your inhale and the contraction of your exhale. Right at your belly. Last one. Inhale to sink it through the earth. And double ground it. We're going to take a hydration pause here. So before we go to the taffies. So please always bring your water nearby so that you can slowly move to it. <laughs> and get some. And you want to drink only water, not coffee or anything else. It's the best hydration food we have. Mm. 
when you're ready, just come back into Tadasana and then we'll begin our next. Don't hurry. <laughs> Good. Basic, take a breath. Basic taffy. Underneath hand is your left. It's going to be the invite hand. Here will be the right. We're moving to the right. And we'll ground in between each taffy here. One more here, right here. Inhale and sink it through the earth. And double ground it. You're moving through heavy air here. As we move into our next move, your right foot will be grounded and your left foot will move forward into this taffy. Open the hips and bring it back to basic taffy. This is called anchor taffy. Now you're gonna bring your other foot, your right foot forward and your right hand underneath. And that's telling you that you're moving towards the right. And then you come over here to the right. Beautiful. And you go forward again with your left foot and your left hand under. Anchor taffy, the back foot stays on the ground. That's the anchor. And then it pulls in here. And they keep switching. You're the boat. The anchor seems to drop itself right here. And two more. And last one. We always return to the left. And drop our final anchor here at the shore and double ground it. And our next one is circles taffy. You're gonna keep your feet in a V and sink and rise. Circling. One, two, three. Now your left hand moves under to invite you over here. Basic taffy seems to have returned. Inhale and sink. And start again. Right hand under. Invite hands as we're going this way. And two more.
And last one. Beautiful. Double ground it. Perpetual motion, Taffy, with heel step. Last one here, sink it into the ground. Working the pulley, right hand comes forward or left hand comes forward, sorry, right hand comes underneath this hip. And now you bring the left foot forward. You do a diagonal cross here, shoulder, to shoulder. And last one, good. Sink it into the ground. And now we'll move from the other side here. Now your left hand's gonna be under the hip, your right hand will come forward, the left foot. And you're just going really this far with it so that the these diagonal cross is just really just someone else's shoulder. And then back to the other shoulder, perfect. And I love to swivel my foot here because I do have concerns about the connection between heel, knee, and hip. So if you're able to do that, you slide on the back ball of the foot and you slide on the front heel. And it really saves your knees <laughs> and your ankles. And when you come down here, it's like you pull this hip back, since this is the dominant side right now, right there. And then you pull the hip back with the inhale. So this is really an exhale. And an inhale. And the other hand's just the companion hand and follows along. And last one here. Good. Yeah, that's working the pulley. Probably came from the Industrial Revolution, early 19, late 1800s, early 1900s. We don't know, but lots of people on sewing machines. Beautiful. That's a really gorgeous move. Let's just shake that out before we go to our last part of this. The symphony now has moved through its allegro. And now we move to light at the top of the head, light at the temple, feet in a V, sinking down. Light at the top of the head. A beautiful idea that this is our real temple. Sink and let it go. The crown of the head. All of our thoughts, speech, action are here. And then it goes to the temples after that. So even more of the crown of the head. Inhale up again. Let's do that again. Exhale down. Breathe it in because you really need to rest here for a moment here. Sink and rise. Sink, rise, sink. Whereas you would do that forever, 
sink. And now circle the palms. That's circling all your good thoughts, your good actions, your good decisions. And then you hold them in honor and sink and rise again. Turn the palms over and then send them towards the ground and then back to your heart with the left hand on top. Sink it down and now bring them to your temples, light at the temple. Once again, feet are in a V, sink and rise. Now circle the energy of yin and yang and all the opposites at your temples or your true temple. And then hold the energy, breathe it in, sink and rise and let it go. Out into the universe, into the ground and back to your heart with the left hand on top. Sink it down. Open the feet a little bit, but you're still in rider on horse position here. And this is joyous breath. Inhale up, very yawn move. Come up to the balls of the feet. Four times down on the exhale. Third time, drop the heels. <clears throat> here. <clears throat> And last one of four here. The third one is where you drop the heels. Right here. Slow down the grounding now because we're going to move into passing clouds pretty soon. That was joyous breath. The most yawn move we have in this whole practice. Preparing for passing clouds, bring the feet out into a V. Keep them on the ground this time. And this right hand is up, the left hand is down, facing the earth. And this one is the palm. You don't follow up here. We just let it go. It's the one that's moving towards heaven, but we're already in a space of peace in our meditation. So we don't need to follow it anymore. One more here. And slow grounding. Double ground it, take it all the way up, past the head, slowly down. Six healing sounds, left foot, left hand, whole, heart, who, spleen, su, liver, sh, lungs, she, triple heater, chi, kidneys, ho. Who? Sue. Shh. 
she, 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 and last one, five trees in the middle. Ho, who, su, sh, she, she. Turn the palms over. Tree. 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 Mixing the energy of yin and yang, all the opposites, bringing your left heel to your right ankle bone for cosmic consciousness pose. Your left hand is closer to the heart than your right, and you're looking over the window of eternity and through it. Interlace the fingers, bring them overhead in gratitude. 10,000 years of Qigong, six centuries of Tai Chi of all forms, and the work of Wen Shan Wong, and Justin Stone, Justin Stone creating Tai Chi Chi in 1974. In gratitude. Thank you so much.